When the poster for Pirates of the Caribbean came out, I heard everybody snickering and laughing. What, Johnny Depp is in this? Jerry Bruckheimer, the rock guy, is producing a Disney film? Come on. Things didn't get any better when the trailer came out and they saw how ridiculous Johnny Depp looked. Oh my god, he stooped to a new low. Are we supposed to take him seriously? Is he really doing this movie based on a ride? Man, Disney's out of ideas. But little did everybody know that next to Mickey Mouse and the Princess line, Pirates of the Caribbean would be one of the most profitable Disney franchises ever. It was a big hit at the box office, spawned tons of merchandise, and of course, sequel after sequel after sequel. So, how'd this movie that had so much going against it turn out to be one of Disney's biggest hits? Well, a lot of it does center around Depp, playing the infamous Jack Sparrow. He belonged to a group called the Pirates of the Black Pearl, which he used to lead but now is led by Jeffrey Rush. But the pirates got too greedy and stole some gold that apparently had a curse on it. Now, whenever the moonlight shines, they're revealed as dead skeletons, who can't feel anything that happens to them. This proves to be a big drag for them as they can't experience any of the pleasures of life, so they tried to get the curse lifted. And they think the answer lies in a young Kira Knightley who is kidnapped and has to be saved by Orlando Bloom, who it turns out is the real key to get the curse lifted. Along with Johnny Depp's help, they steal some ships, get in sword fights, all sorts of cannon play, gun play, swinging around, all the yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me stuff. When the film came out, people loved it. And the more and more they watched it on DVD, the more and more they noticed the little comedic bits here and there, and the more and more they just got into it. Nowadays it's sort of seen as this action masterpiece, but I don't know if i go that far. It is fun, and it is goofy, and it has a lot of fun action in it. Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow is comedically over the top and gets a lot of good laughs. Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley are sort of the straight people to bounce off of, but they do a pretty decent job. Jeffrey Rush, I think, was born to play a pirate. I mean, just look at him. He's yucking up every scene he's in, and he's loving every moment of it, and so are we. What helps the movie become so enjoyable is that it does have such a good sense of humor. And it's not all in-jokes with current speak, it's actually jokes that, well, would fit in that time period. Yeah, for the most part. You have to have quite the extension of disbelief to buy a lot of this, but hey, for Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, I think that kind of goes without saying. So everybody went in with that mindset and were kind of pleasantly surprised at how much fun it was. If I did have a problem, it's that there's probably a couple too many winks at the audience, especially having it be a Disney film. For example, did you notice that Jonathan Price is dressed up as Captain Hook in the beginning? What's the point of that? There's one line where someone refers to the Little Mermaid. I guess that's a Disney joke. Honestly, there's probably more references to other Disney films than there is the actual ride in this flick. But part of the fun of it is it doesn't feel like something that was needlessly made just to attract people who know the ride. It actually is sort of its own story with its own unique feel to it, even if there are a few nods here and there. I don't think it's a grand scale masterpiece, but I don't think it's supposed to be either. I think it's supposed to be just sort of a fun swashbuckling adventure with a lot of good comedy and a lot of good laughs. And that's exactly what I got. For a film that everybody thought was going to tank, we were all really surprised. If you can buy how incredibly silly and over the top it's going to be, and again, with the title Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, you kind of assume you're going to, I think you can have a lot of fun with it. The music's great, it looks great, it's acted great, it's a pirate's life, and it's definitely for me. After the surprise success of the first film and how it seemed to keep getting more and more money, Disney decided to do the Lord of the Rings route and film its two sequels back to back. And then another one pointlessly followed too. The consensus seems to be that the first sequel is great, the second sequel is awful, and the third sequel is... Wait, there's a third one? Did I just see that? Boy, was that forgettable. I think I'm one of the few people that has sort of the same outlook on all of them, which is... Eh? All of them have some really good action and some fun adventure, but all of them also have a lot of pointless padding, are really drawn out, and have some incredibly confusing and also annoying moments. In Dead Man's Chest, we continue the adventures of Jack Sparrow as he goes up against Davy Jones, which is a really great design. But they also bring back Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley. What's the point? Their story ended in the first one. We didn't need them back. And on top of that, they give them a lot of screen time and a lot of backstory, and nobody cares. They were great at leveling out the more serious and mellow moments in the first one, but that was it. They did their job. They didn't need to be brought back. And a lot about their story doesn't add up. For example, Orlando Bloom meets his father, and yet in the first film, they keep saying how much they look alike. In fact, they keep confusing the two for each other. This is spitting image of old bootstrap Bill. Come back to us. But look at these two. Do they look remotely alike? 
Would you confuse this guy for Orlando Bloom at any moment? Giant Depp is still fun as Jack Sparrow, but he's really overused. For example, there's this one scene where they have to save him from all these natives that are trying to eat him. Why? There's no reason for it. It doesn't connect to the story and it goes on for like 20 minutes. Couldn't you cut that? The ending is also based on a cliffhanger where they have to go save Jack Sparrow, which takes up even more time in the next film. Again, it's totally pointless, and even then that doesn't quite match up. At the end of this film, they say they challenge death and go to the ends of the world to try and get him back, but then the next film they say they didn't really want him back, it was just for some sort of big cause. The pirate song is sung or some crap like that. It's so inconsistent. I feel like they really want to rip off Star Wars here, like the stuff with the natives was sort of like the Jabba the Hutt scene that went on too long, and that the little cliffhanger where they had to save one of the main heroes in between movies is like Empire Strikes Back. But hey, even in Star Wars, a lot of people said that Jabba scene went on way too long and was kind of pointless. And there was a lot more character and drama that was riding in the Star Wars films than there is in the Pirates films. But God knows, they try to shove this stuff in. Orlando Bloom has a lot of drama dedicated to him. Kira Knightley has a lot of drama dedicated to her. Even that guy that was chasing them in the first one, he's back and he partakes in this really big complicated story. And speaking of which, they are really complicated. There's like a ton of things going on in these films. I couldn't follow it, and I didn't care. All I wanted to see was some sword fighting, some good action, and some comedy. Isn't that what we got with the first one? Isn't that what we should expect from something called Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, in Dead Man's Chest, we did get a lot of that. One, it stopped trying to shove so many damn plot points in our faces. The characters still get some funny lines, there's a lot of good slapstick. There's a wonderfully choreographed fight scene involving a watermill wheel. But if this film was already kinda complicated, the third one gets really complicated. Shuffling in at almost three hours with so many plot threads, so many characters not needed. And it being so needlessly dark and confusing and weird and just not that much fun. Again, when the comedy is there and the sword fighting and all that good stuff, it's fine. But I just don't get this idea of trying to turn it into this big grand epic. I mean, sweet Jesus, the film opens with a little boy being hanged. Yeah, sorry Disney, you lost me at hanging little boy. Guys, it's Pirates of the fucking Caribbean, not Schindler's List. But like I said before, there are a lot of really fun scenes. The climax is really great. There's still some good comedy. But you gotta sit through a lot of boring, complicated, needlessly gritty shit to get to it. And a lot of people just didn't think it was worth it. Personally, I think it's just a little more annoying than the second one. Which didn't knock my socks off all the time either. On Stranger Ties, finally got rid of Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley and decided just to focus on Johnny Depp, so everyone thought it would be better. But again, there's so much focus on this needlessly complicated plot. He's looking for the Fountain of Youth, that should be easy, right? No, they have to get like a diamond from this glass and put it in there, but you have to get the water dripping from a certain side and one gives you eternal life, one takes it away from you, and then there's also this kind of love interest that poses as Jack Sparrow. I, okay, wait a minute, she poses as Jack Sparrow? Come on, movie, even we can't buy that. This is like the Pirates of the Caribbean we thought we were gonna see with the first film. Not thinking at all what it's talking about. I actually think Noah's brother Miles said it best when he just asked, can't Jack Sparrow just go looking for some treasure? That's all we really want to see. And he's right. The story in the first one was very simple, just pirates trying to lift a curse. With the second, third, and fourth, it's so all over the place, I forget exactly what the stories are. So, it's a real mixed bag. I can't think of any sequel that was good all the way through from beginning to end. But I can't think of one that gave me nothing to enjoy either. All of them did have funny moments, and all of them did have some really cool action from time to time. But when they try to get really heavy and really grand and really serious, man, they don't know how to do it. And they shouldn't have to do it. Don't try to tell Lord of the Rings, just tell us Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what we liked with the first flick. So, if you're patient enough and willing to sit through a lot of complicated story to get to the fun stuff, you'll definitely get your moments. But if you're looking for something more complete, well-flowing, and better put together, then in Pirate's Life, this ain't.